I am the Nature Hacker, and this is your world. Today I want to talk about silicic acid. And no, that's not aspirin. It's not salicylic acid. It's silicic, like silica. Now, if you found this video, I'm going to assume that you already know what silicic acid is, and you want to know how to make it at home. Well, I will get right to that. But, just in case you found this video without knowing what it is or why you need it, I'm going to take a second to explain that. Now, silica is the second most abundant mineral on Earth, second to oxygen. Uh, you know, and hydrogen, obviously, but second to oxygen, silica is the most abundant. Now, you would think that they would also portray that in the body where it would be very abundant in the body, but it simply isn't that abundant in the body. Now, you can argue that, okay, that's because it doesn't need to be that high in the body or that it shouldn't be too high in the body. But it seems like a lot of experts and people throughout history have seemed to suggest that we really do need a lot more than we get. The Chinese, um, uh, you know, they use bamboo as a source of silica, which is an incredible source of soluble silica. Um, Louis Pasteur said that he believes that silica in the future will be recognized uh, as really how important it is for human health. Now, um, what are some of the benefits of silica? I mean, I'm going to speak from my own personal experience. You can Google it and see what other people say, but from my own personal experience, um, it seems to help dry up mucous membranes. Help you know, it helps to you know create less free water in the body. And free water is bad because it wreaks havoc in the lungs, especially and in the large intestine, where it supports microbial and parasitic growth. So silica kind of gets into your bodily secretions and kind of makes it a little more viscous. Um, a little, uh, <clears throat> a little more sticky, I guess you could say, um, so that there's less free water that can support microbial growth, including, hopefully, viruses. Um, so, so that is why I feel that silica is important. And um, now, where shall we go? We shall talk about silica. All right, so silicic acid. So now, now, now we know about silica. Now the problem with silica, the reason why it's not that much in our body, is because it's not well absorbed by the body. Um, silica is typically in the form of silica, silicon dioxide, which is glass. You know, and it's you know like crystals, like quartz and things like that, and that is very insoluble. I mean, you could. You could grind that up into a very fine powder and you would still not absorb practically any of it. So um, we need to um, get soluble silica. Now, I think that in the past that there was more soluble silica in the world. I mean, uh, you know, no matter if you believe in religion or not, I mean, history shows that there was a global flood and the most reliable account of the global flood said that there was water above the earth that came down during the flood. So that did two things. One, it increased the amount of water on earth. So, you know, when we're talking about drying up mucous membranes and things like that, you know, the silica helps dry. Silica is like an earth element. It helps dry things out. You know, now we have a lot more water on earth so it's going to be, we're going to need more silica to dry things out. But I will argue that we get less silica than we did back then before the water came down to earth. You might, you know, I don't really want to discuss, you know, how I believe that water was above the earth. I mean, it's, I believe there was like a bubble basically and, you know, in the asteroid belt and Ceres is remnant of this bubble that was that encompassed the sun, the earth, Mercury, Venus, etc. So and that, that's what I believe. Anyway, so we passed through this water. We got this water down there. And the, the bubble that I believe existed popped. And, you know, that water, a lot of it, some of it came down to earth. Um, 
So what that causes is it causes cosmic rays to come in um, more frequently and more powerfully. Now, when cosmic rays hit silica, what they do is they oxidize it, making silica less soluble. To dissolve silica, you need to form silicate. And silicate is formed by um, a reducing agent like sodium hydroxide. So the oxidation of extra cosmic rays is making less silica soluble. So it's a double whammy. We get we have more water element on Earth, and we have less available Earth element to dry it out. So we're in a predicament, and uh, silica, soluble silica, is our solution. Now, how to make this? It's actually quite simple on the scale of things. Once you know how to make it, it's simple. If you don't know how to make it, it's impossible. Alright, so we need silicic acids. You would think that you would take glass and treat it with an acid. Well, this is not going to work. Uh, it's just absolutely acid will not dissolve it. You have to do a special workaround, and that is to dissolve it in a strong base like sodium hydroxide, which is lye. So you add in a silica source like diatomaceous earth is my favorite. Um, add to it some sodium hydroxide, heat it up, you will dissolve the silica and it will form a sodium silicate solution, just a clear liquid. Now, this is great. Now, what you do is you let any precipitate settle out, because um, diatomaceous earth contains also illuminates and stuff that aren't going to dissolve. And then you decant, which means you pour off that um, soluble liquid. Oh, and you might need to boil it to get uh, the diatomaceous earth to dissolve. Uh, put it, throw it in the fridge for a bit, uh, let it settle, then pour off that um, soluble liquid into another container, a glass, and then uh, clean out your, you know, your, the junk that is left over in the, in the, um, the bowl or whatever you're using to, to heat it. <clears throat> then you pour that. Uh, that new sodium silicate solution into you know your bowl or you know your pan or whatever you're using. Now you have you have sodium silicate and this is pr this is pretty um, soluble. It's pretty bioavailable, I should say. The problem is it's very high pH and it's not the most bioavailable most is an acid form of the sil uh, silicate so what you want to do is you want to cool oh uh, for, before you cool it um, you're gonna want to add borax and um, maybe some uh, yeah just borax at this point okay you add borax and that's gonna help prevent precipitation when you add acid so you have your uh, solution with borax in it and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a summary after, so just listen. You don't have to be taking notes yet. Then what you do is you cool it down. So you have your borax dissolved in there. You cool it down, like throw it in the fridge for a while or freezer. Once it's reasonably cool, like cool to the touch, then what you're gonna want to do is maybe <clears throat> add in some DMSO if you want, which I like to do, and then add in citric acid. You're going to want to add in a decent amount of citric acid to get it to be acidic. So what I do is I just take a little dropper, take a little bit, put it on my tongue and see if it's acidic. So basically just adding citric acid until it's acidic. And that's all. You're stirring, making sure that it's not clumping into like um, gel, gel, gelatinous masses. If it does that, that means that um, your solution was not cool enough or that you didn't add the borax, or something like that. And that is all. You are left with silicic acid. So, to sum that up, you take diatomaceous earth. You add sodium hydroxide till it dissolves you, as you're heating it up. Now you take that liquid off the top and simply add citric acid till it's acidic. Or, even before adding citric acid, you add borax and um, maybe some DMSO and then add your acid, stir it up and you're done. So that's diatomaceous earth, sodium hydroxide, borax, citric acid.
And that is it. And I just did that. I'm left with this crystal clear silicic acid. It's a little bit acidic. I diluted it in some extra distilled water. Make sure you use distilled water has to be. And the borax, the reason you do that is to make it more soluble. Because if you don't have borax or you do it at you add the acid at too high of a temperature, it will um it will form these little like uh cloudy clumps and stuff, and that is polymerized um silicic acid that the form via condensation reaction. So that's not very bioavailable. You want to get in the individual little pieces <clears throat> so that it's clear. And um, yeah, drink it up. It's a little acidic. It tastes like um, definitely has a taste. It's not just a citric acid. I mean, it's the silica in there has a, its own flavor. And it's kind of a reminiscent flavor. Um, that could be some of that. It could be from the DMSO that I put in it. But yeah. Get a lot of soluble silica. Turns out, um, maybe one of the first things you notice is that you're nasal passages, the mucus is a little, gets thicker, kind of a little bit stickier, for lack of a better word, in a good way, where it's not as runny, not as drainy and stuff, so, yeah, anyway, that, that is how you make silicic acid, I am the nature hacker, do work.